and welcome to the next level. We are happy to have you here tonight. We are all a little giddy, so we'll see how tonight <laughs> goes. Um, our ask for for tonight, uh, since uh, we are at an interesting inn with a bit of a higher class of individual, um, who else is staying at this inn? Who who else that might be interesting and fun to run into might be staying at the inn that uh, our characters might come across? <laughs> So yes, if you have any ideas, uh, send those along. Um, otherwise, we will get right into things. We have the 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 our heroes have traveled um, a decent ways across uh, the world to the west, uh, seeking a ship to take them even further west to get to the Aelinine Forest. Uh, however, when they got to Razaval, which is one of the big port cities, it has been completely locked down. There was some confusion uh, and sort of varying stories about uh, what exactly had happened and why it's locked down. But our heroes are staying at a very nice inn at the moment, um, uh, sort of waiting in luxury for uh, their ship to literally come in. And uh, we'll pick things up sort of, uh, well, actually, before we pick things up, we'll get uh, Leon's start of session roll done. All right. Yay. Nice. Getting closer. <laughs> and uh, as, as morning dawns uh, the next day, uh, you all wake up probably well rested. You've had, you know, nice beds. Even the the lesser beds in this area are still pretty plush and comfortable. Um, and uh, Torok, I will need you to give me a saving throw. Let me just double check what type of saving throw it is. Do -do -do. Um, wisdom, please. Fourteen. Okay. Sounds good. Uh, but otherwise, you all wake up um, well rested and refreshed. Um, there's a, a meal uh, service that uh, is probably, um, you know, ready to be brought up whenever you uh, ask for it. And if you remember from the meal the previous night, it was quite extravagant. Um, so yes, whenever you would like to have your breakfast served, somebody will bring it up. There will be others that, you know, serve it and those sorts of things. So. How would you like to start your day? I mean, I think I'm definitely going to find out where the closest um, like magical emporium or spell store, like spell book. I can't even think of what they would be called, but you know what I mean. Yep. Uh, well, the Magic Guild is actually not far from the inn you're staying in. Excellent. Then I ask for directions to the Magic Guild. Yep, you can get that uh, if you're on the map. I will actually point it out on the map. Uh, it is this building here, down by the waterfront on the river. Oh, OK. Cool. So directly south of where you are. Awesome. And I will let everyone know my plan is to go and purchase at least one new spell. I wish to get sending so that I can communicate with Gildy. Anyone who wishes is welcome to come with me to explore the town. It could be one of many sites that we see today. It... Turok would like to go get a go. Oh, Jess, you're on mute. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after breakfast, I'd love to go for a walk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Turok definitely wants to go restock equipment. We need more mm -hmm. rations. Wouldn't mind looking at some new equipment in general just to see what's available. Yep. Maybe they have a greater rock of healing. Oh, yeah. Ooh, ooh. A boulder of healing? <laughs> I don't think we want a boulder of healing. No, I, I, not in size. It does size. get bigger with more, more how, how <laughs> powerful it is. It's Really? It, oh, yeah, no. The size Mint can ratio. discover that in town. <laughs> That's hysterical. We have the greater rock of healing. It's over there. No one's been able to use it for about three decades. But... Uh, <laughs> 
And then we have the Rock of Gibraltar of Resurrection, but it... <laughs> right, okay. So it sounds like people are going to be uh, going there sort of various ways to check out the city and uh, uh, sort of have some interesting encounters uh, out in the city potentially as well. Uh, great, so um, who's going with who and uh, potentially where? So let's just figure that out first. We know uh, Leon potentially wants to go down to the the Magic Guild will sort of stick Leon there. Uh, and Mint wants to go for a walk. Uh, and I think Dorak, you were going to go with her. Yep. I, will. I thought we were all going to go to the Magic Place and see what they had. Uh, oh, um, so the way it is described to you, um, it is for practitioners of magic. It ah. is not a anybody can walk in and buy magical items sort of thing. It is a Magic Guild. You need to be a part of the Guild in order to get in. So the, it's not like the little shop where I found the, the Rock of Healing no. before? No. Um, okay. If you're, yeah, looking for that sort of thing. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here on the map so I can see more. You're probably thinking the... Uh, yeah, so there's um, the Enclave. Uh, which is a strange little place in the middle of the city, uh, which has been sort of taken over by druids. Um, so there's potentially some sort of magical nature stuff there. Um, there's the library, uh, which is a massive sprawling building with many wings. Uh, so for those who are interested just in sort of books and knowledge and that sort of thing. Um, in terms of stores with magical items, um, again, they're there probably aren't a lot of those. There's probably a few. Um, and I would say this, yeah, probably a couple in the blue district, uh, which is sort of where you are now. Um, potentially one in the green district, which is uh, sort of over here in these buildings. Probably not so much in the red district, which is sort of the western side of town. Uh, although, if you're really looking for sort of the out of the way, you know, quirky magical shops, like where you found the Stone of Healing, they're probably going to be sort of uh, outside the, so this this wall here on the, the west side of town is actually not the actual city wall, not the outer city wall. Uh, it's the old wall uh, where the city used to end. Um, so uh, if you're looking for sort of really out of the way stuff, you're probably looking on the other side of the, the old wall, sort of out in the, uh, uh, the other areas of town. Um, I will remind you, you are potentially here to find a ship. So even though ships aren't leaving, potentially you could um, see if you could at least, you know, find a ship that would be willing to take you when ships are able to leave. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you get directions to probably a couple different places in the city. Um, let's come up with some names for places. Uh, so there's the Magic Guild. That's just the Magic Guild. That's fine. Um, Yes. Who wants to name a magic shop in the blue district? This is a high class magic shop. Uh, so what would a name be for that? Bell Emporium. Wait, what was that? Bell Emporium. The Bell Emporium. Oh, yes. Okay. So the Bell Emporium. Um, Emporium. Uh, caters to all manner of sort of the, the upper class items, including some magical items. So it's a, a shop that's almost like a department store with and would have sort of a magical item section to it. Um, so it is quite large. I'm going to say that it's, uh, we'll just sort of put a little mark on the map where some of these are. So, uh, free would we be able to get rations there as well, possibly? Um, if you if you're going to get rations there, you'd be getting like high end rations. Oh, that's you'd dangerous. be getting like the caviar of rations. Don't need that. Yeah, we no, I didn't. Them. After we leave here, we might be so accustomed to the niceties of stuff. <laughs> All right, so we'll say the Bell Emporium is uh, here. I'm just mark that building there. Leon will bankrupt us just on higher tasting food. Yeah, <laughs> now I'll see the little red dot. Yep. All right. So that's the Bell Emporium. Um, uh, let's say there's a uh, another one that's slightly more towards magic, but a little more sort of boutique and specialized. What would that be called? Is it still in the blue district? Yes. 
the sapphire. Oh, Ooh. yes. Yes, I like that, the sapphire. And then there's, uh, so yes, where, where are we going to put that? The sapphire, we'll say, is um, down uh, by the, so this building down here is the sapphire. It's right down on the shoreline. Um, and then there's one in the green district. So this would be slightly less sort of super high class, sort of more middle, you know, decent merchant class sort of a, a, a location. Um, what would that be called? Like a, like, like a gnome depot? <laughs> <laughs> Done. Gnome depot. Wow. I was, I was thinking about going there with you, and I was like, am I going to go there? Gnome Depot? I don't think so. Gnome Depot. Yep, that's in the Green District. Oh, uh, a little more a little more commoner. It's it's actually, it's it's be a little out of place in the Green District, but that's sort of the the, 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 so the person who set it up had, had a little bit more funds, had a good place to buy. So, all right. I'll make a note of that. And let's see, where is that? That one's going to be... Right in here, that building there. All right. And unfortunately, if you're looking for things outside of the, the main part of the city here, the staff at this uh, hotel would not be able to tell you where they are. You probably have to go and ask around. Um, so that's sort of the main locations in the city. Uh, any other places you might like to visit? So Wisp wants to try to learn more about this um noble who was presumably possibly killed like that rumor that's going around yep. so she probably wants to go to um a bunch of different inns and, and taverns to kind of gather more information okay i would join wisp on that okay so we have because plus there's beer plus yeah there's beer <laughs> All right, so wait, wait, i mean wait. information i want to gather information right yes collect all the information all right um so yeah, if you're looking for like high-end inns, uh, there's like several throughout the Blue District and we can sort of just sort of place you wherever. Um, more like rough and tumble taverns, you're probably looking more the Red District or even outside the, the main wall or the other side of the river. Um, and maybe you can get some sort of more back-end, uh, not back-end, that's what I'm looking for. Underbelly sort of, you know, the, the seedy underbelly of the galley. city sort of thing, yes. Back alley, back alley, not back end. I've got that punch stuck in my head. Okay. <laughs> We're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Which, All right. Which building's the library? Is that, is it this gigantic one here? No, that is the temple. Um, that is the temple. The library is this one over here at the purple building. Oh, okay. Cool. Then, yeah, then Leon is going oh, to- Oh, sorry, no. Uh, let me correct. So yes, the big one here is the temple. The green one is the library. The purple one is the university. And then this building up here is sort of the um, the government house. Okay. That's like the enterprise of libraries. Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> then my own is going to suggest that uh, those who wish to go for a stroll and, and do purchasing and things, we could stop first so that i can purchase a spell or two then we can check out the various stops and then you can carry on to the gnome depot while i make a detour to the library okay so yeah uh, so leon's gonna go sort of initially with you uh talon uh where are you going so uh as you mentioned this last night or last time but uh things got wrapped up which is fine mm. Uh, if he could, Talon last night would have wanted to do a little bit of walking around, and I assume not in the area that we're in, but I could be wrong. Uh, Talon would want to kind of try to survey what he can find and look for sort of the, you know, the the underbelly, like mm. the, I mean, having experience with the, the Shrubbin Syndicate, to see if there's like a similar syndicate or some kind of a you know, not necessarily engage them, uh, but just look around and see if he can find any signs of some kind of a, a syndicate-like system or group. So in the All event right. of, should we need information, maybe it might work out to talk to them. All uh, right. But also just to kind of keep an eye on like 
what's around and, and maybe what dangers might be around. So yeah, areas that you would have been easily able to get to would be uh, sort of you crossed uh, that big bridge across the river. Uh, mm -hmm. Pretty much anything along the river on the other side is, is slightly more sort of uh, the, the cedar side of town. Uh, mm -hmm. That would have been the easiest place to get to. Otherwise, you're looking at sort of much more the fringes of things. Um, give me, uh, how do I want to do this? Give me a, uh, do you have any bonus to uh, investigation? Sounds very intelligency, so not typically. Uh, nope. Okay. So give me a charisma roll with advantage. So you're more trying to just be out there and, and talk to people as opposed to sort of investigating, you know, mental thinky stuff. Uh, although you could have read your book as well to do that. So if you wanted to, that's also an option. If he was going to go out last night, he probably would have done it before then, because he probably would have yeah. only spent a couple of, like, two to three hours top, so it would have been an yeah. hour with some help. All right. No. So up to you if you want to do um, investigation with your book with advantage or charisma with advantage. Uh, uh, So his intelligence with the book, I'm trying to remember what it is. Is 18. 18. Yeah, Plus so I guess it'll be one higher. So yeah, right. I'll, I'll go with the, the book then. All right. Um, <clears throat> that is with advantage. Uh, give me one moment. Did I put it in here? Oh, I said charisma. That was going to be intelligence, though. So. Oh, that's okay. My investigation. There it is. Okay, uh, that's a good roll. So you essentially, you, you are familiar enough with the CD underbelly of cities that you are able to find uh, sort of the right location and the right place to, to overhear bits of things. Um, and you start to be able to, like through your, your bits of research, you start to be able to consolidate a bit of sort of some of the rumors uh, that you had hear, heard the previous day around sort of, yeah, something happening in the lockdown and someone's been killed or someone's, there's a person who's been kidnapped. Um, so there was a girl, a young girl. Um, it, the You're still not quite sure exactly what uh, race she was. There's sort of some debate about that. Some say she was elven. Some say she was uh, sort of other uh, race, uh, but she wasn't human. That's sort of the, the agreed upon thing. She wasn't human and she was strange. Two things that are known about the girl. She wasn't human and she was strange. Um, and the commander of the city, um, did I give the commander a name? I don't think I did. I'll give him one right now. Um, commander Tom. Uh, commander Ulrich. Ulrich, Commander Ulrich, um, had, uh, had this girl, um, then again, there's varying stories about uh, she was his slave to she was his daughter uh, or adopted yeah. daughter. Again, that's sort of a little uncertain. Um, but the part of the story that people seem to agree upon is um, somebody tried and succeeded to kidnap the girl in the attempt, many of the people who were trying were killed, including uh, some Mornish officers who were also killed. So there was a raid, a bunch of people died, and whoever was trying to kidnap the girl was able to do so. Okay. That is what you have found out the previous night. So if that shades how you would like to proceed today, um, yes, we can shift things up a little bit. Sorry if people can hear the dog barking. Oh, that's a good boy. Uh, 
And right. also, um, I would probably tell and share, yes. Yeah, all this relay this information, I guess, in the morning uh, as people are eating breakfast or whatever. Um, don't know how that changed. So uh, it was Wisp and Jacob who were going to go to drink the beer. I mean, find out yep. what they could find. So, yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll pass it on to them. So, I guess I'll probably tag along with them. If that's sure. Uh, that makes it nice and even. So, it's a party of three and a party of three. Sounds good. All right. Okay. Before we head out, Leon does have a question to ask everyone. All right. So there is a spell which I am considering getting, but I would need to have everyone's agreement before I could do so. The reason is because it is called Leoman's Secret Chest. I would then be able to hide a chest on the ethereal plane. So for these things that we find that we wish to have completely secure, we would be able to hide them on the ethereal plane. However, the material component for this spell is a chest made out of exquisite items with a value of no less than 5,000 gold pieces. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a 5,000 gold piece gem. So with everyone's permission, if you feel that this is something that is worth investing in, then I could, while we're in this fancy city, in a place where they can actually make this kind of thing, <laughs> I could have the chest made while we wait, and then we would be able to hide any item which we do not wish to be discovered in the ethereal plane. And a voice uh, that... Uh... I'm assuming you're discussing this in your room, but yes, a voice uh, sort of pops up that isn't any of you and says, oh, I highly recommend that spell. I found it very useful when I was alive. And yes, there's just a gentleman, semi-ethereal, hanging out uh, at the side of the, the room. The moment's like, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I can leave if you like. Ah. Wiff said, like who are you? <laughs> Nick oh. backs away slowly. <laughs> <laughs> I am um, uh, Tenju. 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 Yes, uh, there we go. Hello. I take it that you are a wizard? I was once, yes. I see. Now, a particularly skillful wizard? Oh, well, that, of course, is up to debate. Obviously, I ended up dead, so, you know, maybe not. Right. So during this conversation, while Leon is talking, Wisp is like walking up to him and like kind of like reaching out, like poke, like trying to poke him. Stop that! Stop that! But it's it's impolite to poke the ghost. <laughs> I've, I've I've never met a ghost before. I'm sorry, I didn't. I I've didn't never met whatever was... you are before either. I'm thrilled. <laughs> oh oh well, I'm a tabaxi. It's really nice to meet you. Uh, I just wrote this down, Tanju. <laughs> Literally just said that. Uh, Wisp, if you're if you're done being incredibly, <laughs> um, Wisp is a little hurt by Leon's words and, and like backs away like a little bit sulky. Excellent. Um, <laughs> uh, um, would you consider yourself, or would you happen to know anyone who you would consider an expert in death? Oh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I mean, I'm dead. Uh, uh, don't, I guess I'm sort of an expert in, in being dead. Uh, although I'm not like really dead because I haven't passed through the, the halls yet. I just decided to stick around for a while. So I don't know if that qualifies. And um, in terms of when I was alive, I don't think I knew anybody who was any more knowledgeable about death than I've become now, assuming I'm knowledgeable. Uh, I'm not being much help, am I? How long have no. you been dead? Oh, 720 years. Ah. Hmm. Thereabouts. 700? No. Three? No. Time is so much different. What year is it? Can you tell him? Tur uh, yes. Turok looks over and goes, <laughs> do you work for the hotel? No. <laughs> I just like staying here. They have very nice rooms. Hmm. You, weren't, you, weren't you get a better rate than we do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have to pay at all. That is true. 
they do have me exercise every now and then, but yeah. <laughs> I see. <laughs> How do you exercise? You don't have muscles. <sighs> I need to get my snare drum cymbal <laughs> sound effect. <laughs> uh, Jacob, do you do you feel that it would be helpful to speak with this individual or? Doubtful. She sort of looks over at Jacob's like, hi, um, yeah, Hello. do you, you're looking for someone who knows about death? I have a dead person that's currently oh. with me, but I can only access them through meditation. I can only talk to them through meditation. Oh, all right. Very unusual. Uh, yeah, yeah. Does the name no, I read you ring a bell at all? Uh, I, nope. I, nope. I don't think so. Actually, I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him a check. It's pretty that's obscure. That's kind but... of rude, Tal, and just assuming that every dead person knows every other it's dead Jacob. person. Oh, sorry, it was Jacob. I know. That? <laughs> that's right. Who's making such right. a terrible, such a terrible impression? One person comes up and pokes. Oh, I've never seen one like you before. Pokes them. The other one assumes. Oh, you all know each other, right? It's oh, okay. I have. Like... I have dead people friends. <laughs> oh, geez. my best friend was a dead is a dead person. <laughs> Uh, no, sorry, I don't. I don't know that name. Not, not somebody I was familiar with while I was alive or while I've been dead. Have you heard anything on the other side about someone kind of? I'm trying to even like. Uh, sorry, this is out of character now. I'm trying to de like describe what. <laughs> what? Have, yeah, what's what's happened there? Yeah. <laughs> um. It and it's probably very hard to describe because it is weird. Um. They're dead, but they're sort of also trapped and yeah and i'm the you, only you, person that can see them yeah so i kind of yeah, and they're like the, he's like well i mean ghosts can be selective they can they can you know make themselves visible to only certain people but uh, it does seem odd uh, like you're assuming you yeah, described sort of a fair bit of things it's like yeah no it if other people sort of thought you had an imaginary friend that i don't know why they wouldn't just show themselves if they could do so uh, particularly since um, he's a wizard, then I also explain, I also add in details about what I've observed using detect magic <laughs> while Jacob is meditating. <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yes, okay. So it's a bit of necromancy and some others as well. V very curious, very curious. Hmm. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm coming up with a link here. I, I don't. If they're a ghost, they're a very odd ghost. Uh, they, they wouldn't. They're not sort of behaving the way I would have uh, expected them to behave. Thank Maybe you. they're sort of really dead, dead, and they're on the other side, and that limits them somehow. I, I don't know. No, I say, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna say thank you. This is this may be confirming some some suspicions I had. Oh, okay. You're welcome. You're a very helpful ghost. I like to be. Is there anything that we can do for you in return for your assistance here? Well, uh, I mean, <laughs> uh, do you know anybody with a greater uh, uh, resurrection uh, ab ability at all? Who could undo 700 plus years of death? Yes, <laughs> with true resurrection. Yes, 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 that spell. Yes. That's uh, we do not currently. Ah. However, if we do come across someone... <laughs> Just send them this way. I'm sure they'd love to stay here. <laughs> yes, I, my understanding is that it's rather expensive. Uh, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, I, and then I'm just curious whether, you would, whether they would be able to do it for you. If you would have it. Do you... Do you have an estate that they would be able to or get funds from? Or a well-hidden stash of, of valuables? Uh, you, uh, you, I, I don't want to tell you that. That is fair. I mean, it's not that I don't trust you. It's just that, uh, you know, you mortals have a habit of, you know, grave robbing all the time. I see. 
Well, and not all mortals. If not, <laughs> hashtag not all mortals. <laughs> <laughs> this episode got weird. <laughs> uh, well, if you if you wished if if you were ever interested in changing your mind, I would certainly be happy to use anything that you were willing to share in an attempt to try and help to return you to the land of the living. Well, uh, let me think about that. Of course. I'm assuming you're you're staying here another night, so I'll just I'll be I'll be back. Yes, we're not sure exactly how long we're staying, but. Um... No, from everything I've heard, no one's going anywhere in this city. Not that I've heard a lot. I've just heard no one's going anywhere in this city. Exactly. Yes. So, so Wisp's ears perk up a little bit. She says, do you, do you know anything about uh, the kidnapping? No. Oh. Now she's sad. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if I did, if I'd been in the right place at the right time, that would be awesome. But I wasn't. <laughs> Anything else I can uh, help with? I, I get, uh, got some other people I could go freak out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a feeling that my companions are going to wish to go places that I have no interest in. So undoubtedly, you and I can while away some time sharing stories and exchanging information, discussing arcane lore and such. Mm, mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'd be most interested in that. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, so, uh, if you wouldn't mind, though, I think my companion and I would would like some privacy to have our discussion, if you don't mind. Oh, oh yeah, uh, yeah, sure, yeah. I'll just uh, I'll just be uh, on the on the other side of the <laughs> wall, or in some other room, or somewhere else for a while. Thanks for fades away. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yes. So, thoughts on whether I should get Laoman's secret chest. Well, I mean, given we were just speaking to someone who has died, theoretically, what would happen to this chest if you were to die? Well, I mean, I certainly don't plan to. Oh, I don't think anyone's ever planned to. And I live for a rather long time. <laughs> um, it's I believe that the items would be lost <laughs> if I were to die. Um, yeah, let me, I can take a quick look at the spell, but yes, that, yeah. that does seem like a logical conclusion of, of events. Yeah. After 60 days, the cumulative 5% chance per day of spell effect ends. Mm. Um, and if the spell ends and the larger chest is on the ethereal plane, it is irretrievably lost. Mm. So I would think if I died, then there wouldn't be a way to get this. I mean, so is that after sixty days, no matter what, or do you have to like recast it every like sixty days or so to keep it going? After sixty days, the cumulative five percent chance per day the spell's effect ends. But this effect ends if you cast the spell again, if the smaller replica chest is destroyed, or if you choose to end the spell as an action. So yeah, basically, okay. to be completely safe, I would have to recast the spell every sixty days. Okay. Yeah. Do not it. does it require does it require the extravagant cost on the recasting no the so the extravagant cost is just the material items are the actual chest itself that mm -hmm. will go onto the ethereal plane has to be made from materials of at least 5000 gold and then a small replica chest of the same materials is 50 gold pieces yeah, so for 5050 yeah. gold pieces you have access to this spell where then the expensive chest is hidden on the ethereal plane. Yeah. All right. Until such time as you bring it back. All right. I will let the group decide what they want to do. Wisp says, you have a gem that is worth 5,000 gold pieces. Her eyes are like bugging out of her head a little bit. Yes. Can I see it? <laughs> so I. <laughs> Pull out the 5,000 gold piece gem, which is probably very small and not really that impressive because. No, oh, it's probably a good size gem if it's 5,000 gold pieces. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Just anytime I've seen like hmm. real, <laughs> like they just, they look like. Well, so flat. right in perspective, 5,000 gold pieces is a huge amount of money. So this would probably yeah. be like a, you know, 
hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of gem sort of thing. So yeah. So Wisp yes. is like looking at it and um she doesn't she doesn't want to touch it, right? So she's just like <laughs> uh, assuming that Leon is 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 like holding it in, in, in some way. She's just like putting her face really close to Leon's <laughs> hands and just like kind of trying to look at this from all directions. She just says, Wow. <laughs> and Leon just holds it there and lets her look at it and then it's like, so thoughts? I mean, we don't if, if we don't have to decide today, and by no means am I suggesting that it's something that we have to do. It's just an option that I became aware of, and of course, I wish to consult everyone before making this kind of purchase. However, if we were to do this, this is one of the few places that we've ever been <laughs> where I could actually get it done. Tur Turok just just points out. You realize the only thing we have worth putting in there would be the chest you would be purchasing. <laughs> uh, no, not at all. We, in Draconic, I say, we have the life stone. It in Draconic, he's like, right. <laughs> Could we go back and get that statue thing? Because that would be perfect. Well, exactly. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> exactly. We Can could've... we not repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> I like the... <laughs> Surprise I am to say this, Jacob. I like the way you're thinking. <laughs> I can feel Gildy's stare from here. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, right? There are times when we are encountering things that we wish to have hidden. And hmm. currently we are keeping them in bags of holding. And that's all well and good. But this would be even more secure. I could just loan you the five thousand, but I wouldn't know what to do with my remaining ten million gold coins. But it has oh. to be made from an object of that value. Oh, yeah. But we have a five thousand gold piece gem, so we so do rather have, than us cash it in, we, we do can... have the funds to do it if we wish to do it. So why don't we think on it for the day? We can revisit it. I will find out if they have Leoman's secret chest, find out if I can actually have an item as such made today, find out the timing that it would take, etc., and then we can discuss it this evening over dinner. Hmm. I, To be honest, I don't even th to think on it. I vote yes, if only to prevent Leon from being sulky about not getting his chest. Her chest. No. I would not. I would not be <laughs> sulky. I just saw it as an opportunity and thought this could come in handy. Okay. <laughs> I I think it's a good idea as well because that whole thing with the statue is very difficult, and I think if we were to find ourselves in that situation in future, it would be a, a added benefit. Three. We just need one more. <laughs> we're a democracy. Says, well, I think it's very important to keep um expensive things hidden someplace very safe and this chest sounds like a very expensive thing and it sounds like it would be somewhere very safe so <laughs> there you go that's four you're good <laughs> i will look into it we can discuss it again at dinner time yeah. okay right. anything else you're going to discuss as a group before you head out into the city I think Jacob, that if you the have... oh, sorry, go ahead. I was uh, going to was... make a joke. I, I was going to say <laughs> that rather than wait for discussion at dinner time, because it may take them a, a certain amount of time in order to do the spell, and we may be able to leave on a boat sooner rather than later. I know that there's the idea that everything's locked down, but we, we may want to get it finished earlier than. Well, and it wouldn't be somebody else doing it. It would just be Leon acquiring the spell ah. and acquiring the chest. Oh, okay. Once she has both, she could do the spell at any time. Yes. Okay. And yeah. Just but... Take a chest and like wedge this five thousand uh, gold piece gem in there, and then the chest becomes materials worth five thousand gold pieces. Yeah, I get a really <laughs> crappy chest with a five thousand gold piece gem. On it. <laughs> the material component is an exquisite chest, three feet by two feet by two feet, constructed from rare materials worth at least five thousand gold pieces. Where, where are we going to hide the chest? What if they steal the chest? It's it's in the it's, it's ethereal plane. Yeah. <laughs> so we have one on our side that Leon would touch. Yes, a small can... a small replica, a small replica. But what if they steal the small replica? Then that would be bad. 
<laughs> you keep the small replica in a bag of holding. Exactly. And you keep your bag of holding in your portable hole. Everybody knows that. <laughs> no, and I have Ranu watch me to make sure that no one steals it. Okay, so <laughs> foolproof plan. As as you head down into the lobby. Um, you do pass a group that is coming in and seems to be sort of looking for a room. Uh, they are a group of Tritons. Oh, okay. Um, if uh, anybody has not encountered them before, but uh, you're on a coastal city, so they could be potentially an interesting uh, group to encounter if you like. Yeah, there's about uh, four or five of them um, that, uh, yes, are sort of checking in at the hotel. Wisp is very intrigued. She'd I, like to go say hello. I very discreetly and quietly suggest that Wisp not poke the Tritons. <laughs> Wisp, Wisp says, it's okay. I learned my lesson with the ghost. <laughs> Here's your title right there. <laughs> I learned my the lesson Tritons. with the ghost. <laughs> I learned my lesson. Oh, I learned my lesson with the ghost. <laughs> So I think Wisp is 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 going to, I don't know. She, she's just going to walk up and say, um, "If you're if you're checking in, I just want to let you know this place is very expensive." <laughs> also, hello, my name is Wisp. What are what's your names? Uh, ooh, I have. I don't think I have frightened <laughs> names. Give me a moment. <laughs> The, Rob has had trends. to come up with so many names in this episode. <laughs> well, well you're in a city. I've got a, I've got a massive document of names, but there's no Triton names in there. <laughs> <sighs> All right, what's a what's a good Triton name? Give me a uh, Chris. <laughs> Chris? I was I was thinking Tim. Tim, mm -hmm. Tim the Triton. <laughs> <laughs> Names in here. Oh, there we go. Da -da -da -da. I'll have to be T's. Tim, Thaddeus. Ah, uh, there is um, Chorus. Tabasco. Um, uh, Tabasco, the spicy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just stop it. Um, Aaron, Chorus, uh, Jamas, and uh, uh, Otenin. Close. Almost. Sorry, O10, and it just it sounds like a condition. <laughs> yeah, and they are intrigued to meet you. They have never met uh, one of your kind before. Uh, they're also a, of, a little intrigued about the Dragonborn. Uh, there's very, a lot very... of mutual poking that happens. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met one of you before. Could that be the name of the episode, Mutual Poking? Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of campaign. <laughs> mutual poking oh, in the foyer. Okay. Yes. Roll for yeah. initiative? What? Uh, <laughs> oh. You're going to get poked. You might as well get poked in the foyer. Ooh. All right. Oh, oh goodness. <laughs> so, yes, there's a bit of an encounter there. They're like, uh, well, we, uh, we were prepared for to, to you know, for, to, uh, for an expensive uh, stay. We, we have some funds and they sort of turn back to the, the counter mm -hmm. and inquire about a room. So, yes. How old do they look? How old? Yeah. Um, they like teen tritons. Oh, <laughs> wow, <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> want to get one in. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right. I, I leave before any more silliness happens. Good luck. And I, okay. head, to the, I head to the place with the magic. With the uh, and yes, our, our um. Mint and Torak are going to at least sort of go and wait for a little bit there before heading on to magic shops with Leon. <clears throat> or do you want to sort um, of meet Leon at one of the other magic shops and peruse a little bit first? I, well, the, I think the, it's a, go ahead. The first one is the one not by the river, but the just yep. above. Yep. Yeah, that uh, is the Bell Emporium. Right, yeah. So my suggestion is that you come with me here. I'll be quick there, and then we can hit this spot, and then this spot, and then you guys can go here while I go up here. Oh, works for us. That's right. my that's my thinking. So yeah, so I'm gonna go in and be like pretty quick about it. 
All right. Gonna, um, so yes, the that. the the deal is in order to do anything with the guild, you need to be a part of the guild. Um, right. The guild's sort of entrance fee uh, is fifty gold. And what exactly does the does entrance to the guild afford one? Uh, it gets you a marker as being um, part of the guild, which may open up some doors in town. It also gets you access to everything in this particular location. I see. And do they, do they like acknowledge, do they recognize the fact that I'm part of the serrated tradition? Um, <laughs> if so, uh, it's very subtle. They're, they're, the fact that you would be potentially from Dell uh, is not necessarily something that they think you would want called out in a city that is run by the Empire. I see. <laughs> well, then I don't draw attention to it. All right, cool. Um, so basically so, yeah. then the spells... Uh, so yeah, I'll pay them the 50 gold. Yep. And yeah, you wanted... Uh, so yes, they would have Lehman's uh, secret chest. That is available. Okay. And the other uh, one was... Hold on. Yep. I think... 50 gold, that's 500 silver, right? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> Counting up the dimes. <laughs> I still have over, I still have almost 400 silver pieces left. <laughs> I had so much silver. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so I pay, I pay that. Yep. Um, so yeah, I'm interested in the spell sending. I'm interested in finding out if they do have Lamb and Secret Chest, which you said that they did. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also potentially interested in, I don't know, that's probably going to be... It's probably they also have good. sending. Okay, so how much is Laoman's secret chest going to cost me just to get the spell itself? Uh, yeah, just to buy it. Um, what level is it? Level. It's fourth, fourth level. level. Yeah. Um, Let's say um, you would get a, a essentially a, a discount being a guild member. Um, so let's say at fourth level, 1600. That's at a discount? Yeah. For a fourth level spell? Okay. So how much is sending? Uh, so <laughs> sending would be about 900. Sending would be 900 gold. How much is Gildy worth to you? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, you never actually really purchased spells before. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did, and they were nowhere near this expensive. Well, that's not... That is... Did you purchase them last time? In Silver Lake. Oh, okay. Yeah. You also had a really good relationship with that guy, and that was a smaller city. Well, that's forget that then. Um, okay, so nope. <laughs> um, I mean, well, I was trying to yeah figure out what uh, reasonable price would be able to fly. I suppose I could half that, so eight hundred and four fifty. Well, I mean, at this point, I have like seven hundred and fifty nine gold pieces. Oh. <laughs> is is how much I have unless unless I dip into the gems and things right. like that. Right. And after I buy the spell, then I have to spend an additional fifty gold per level mm -hmm. in like to be able to actually copy it into my spell book. Uh, I'm gonna say that essentially includes that cost. So it includes the cost to put it in your spell book. Okay, but that's still gonna be Sorry, so that's going to be 450 gold total? Uh, for sending. For sending. Um, 50. Okay, now, right, sending is not conjuration. And Laoman's secret chest is going to be 800? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay, I well, mean, I guess I'll still... You are in a city. You could, you know, there's also a, a Coliseum here. You could do some betting and see what happens. But... <laughs> um, 
Okay. So I will still find out whether I'll still find out about like um, how long it would like, are they going to be able to make a chest here? How yes, long would it take? You. How long would it take to have a chest made? Um, they probably mentioned that, you know, if you happen to have an item already worth uh, 5,000 gold pieces, that would make it a lot easier. They would essentially just do a transmutation to turn whatever you had uh, to into something of equal value that happens to be chest shape. Oh. All right, then. Good to know. Okay. All right. Cool. Then I will just take that information with me because I'm not going to be spending that much money. Well, yeah. We'll see how long you're in the city and how much money you make. All right. Uh, so, yes, you meet back up with them and head over to uh, the Emporium. Yep. There. While, while you guys were out, and if it's okay, Talon would probably put a request to say, as you're shopping around, mm -hmm. if you happen to see any bracers of defense, it's a rare magical item, uh, you know, makes it harder for people to hit you. Um, wouldn't mind seeing if they have any and how much they are. That, that would be appreciated. Okay. Um, so uh, with the other group, um, you are sort of, uh, moving through some, are you going to start with finer inns or start with sort of the seedier taverns in terms of where you're going just to find out more information or um, have a fun drink and a gamble a bit? Uh, I think based on where they already are in town, where there's like the nicer places, yep. most people just want to start, start there. Correct. Um, so you get to a... Uh, We'll call it less of a tavern and more of like a gentleman's club, but not like gentleman's club. Um, but yes, like a really fine lounge sort of establishment. So like, you know, lush carpets and, you know, the chairs and and sort of that sort of thing. That's probably the first place you come to um, where, yes, you get to the door and there's sort of somebody who's like, can I take your cloak? <sighs> so it is that a, kind of we have a, a, a select uh, menu of, of drinks and food uh, that you could order from if you like. Wisp says, uh, oh, well, that sounds delightful. We are uh, trying to learn more about the city and, and the, and the goings-on. Um, do you, uh, uh, is, there, is there someone who works here yourself, perhaps the bartender or a, or a, or a bard that performs who might know some information and we could uh are you entertainers with? is that what you're uh, you're looking to i i'm i'm not sure i understand you you want someone who you want to talk to somebody who works here about what's happening in the city yes ah. oh, and nice. with, with says i'm a i'm a bard myself if you are uh, uh, looking okay. for entertainment, I would be happy. The entertainer's entrance is around back. If you want to go in there, then maybe there's uh, some some of the the entertainment that uh, you could chat with. Okay, and then Wisp says, Wisp says, oh, oh, well, I'm an entertainer, but my friends here are are not. Um, if I entertain, um, I would be happy to entertain in exchange for their drinks. <laughs> Oh, well, well, we'd have to see where we could fit you in 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 the the, the, the sort of the lineup of, of entertainment that uh, had been scheduled for this afternoon. So uh, <laughs> you'd have to talk to somebody around the back just to see, uh, you know, uh, you measure sort of your talent level and, and and sort of where best you'd fit in. I just assumed all of you were a troop of some sort. They sort of looking up at all of you. You got like the three tallest people in the group here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then Wisp says, "You you oh. look like a traveling like caravan. Like yeah. you're all strong men of some sort." <laughs> Wisp says, "Oh no no no! I assure you, my friends here are very wealthy and ready to partake in your in your beverages. I'll go around to the entertainment side, but uh, you can show my friends to a table." And then, as okay. she's kind of like separating from them, she whispers to Jacob, "She's like, she's like, I can try to get you some free drinks." <laughs> Oh, right, no, sorry, Torak isn't with you. I was thinking Torak was with you, but yes, Jacob is with you, so yes. Yes, oh, Jacob all is of the really not, tall people, not, but yes. not the tall one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Uh, so, yes, you go around to the back, uh, and there's someone who sort of like, you know, welcomes you in, and even there, they're quite like, uh, so yes, you're a new act. You would let you, what, 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 what do you do? 
Uh, let's see, what, what would she say? Uh, she, she would say, uh, I play the viol and I tell stories from around the world. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, well, you certainly have a unique look to you. Uh, <laughs> yes, so uh, if you would like to see the mistress inside, I'm sure she can schedule something for you sometime later today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll oh, yes. go in and find the mistress. <laughs> uh, yeah, and there's like a, a decent sized performers area um, where there's like a whole bunch of like there's some jugglers and there's some, you know, other bards and and there is a sort of a, a immaculately immaculately attired uh, half elf woman who sort of comes over to you is like, yes, you are very intriguing. <laughs> Um, uh, and yes, I, I've heard that you uh, play the viol and uh, tell stories from around the world. Very intriguing indeed. I think we could fit you in to sometime this afternoon, perhaps. Um, how would a 2.30 time slot work for you? Sounds great. I'll be here. All right. Now, uh, our starting fee uh, for for uh, entertainers is only about a hundred gold, I'm afraid. This says, ah, uh, okay, another time then, and then turns around to the, uh, <laughs> sorry, she does say, she does say, um, uh, Oh, oh, I, I, I don't quite have that much. So I, I, I guess. Oh, no, no, no. We'll that's get... what we'd pay you. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> really? I, yes. Wow. I, that works for me. Hick <laughs> <laughs> written all over you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so you can come back later on. Uh, Jacob and uh, Talon. <laughs> Uh, you get seated. Uh, your server sort of waits there at the table after you've been seated. Mm -hmm. I don't even know what an appropriate tip is. Gold <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, coin? That seems excessive. Hey. They accept that and, uh, and, and mm -hmm. sort of, uh, yes, uh, I will take uh, your orders. What would you like? Uh, your finest ale. Ah, yes. One um, Andalusian ale for the, the gentleman and for you. Juice. <laughs> Any particular variety of juice? We have a selection of uh, chilled fruit beverages. Whatever is fresh. They are all fresh. <laughs> Orange. <laughs> orange juice it is. Um, and she goes off to fetch those for you. <laughs> she brings back a, a like good sized ale and a small cup of orange juice. Um, mm -hmm. And it's like, uh, that will be uh, five coppers uh, for the orange juice and uh, three silvers for the ale. Hand over five silver. Thank you. Um, Talent is hand over one silver for the orange juice. Another orange juice it is. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm going to try yep. to come back in and, and <laughs> with them. <laughs> also. Yep. You, you get there probably about the time that that's happening. So yes, Jacob, yeah. you were saying? Uh, just going to scan the room to see if there's... Who's in the room? Who looks like they may be willing to talk, maybe have information? So a couple things jump out. Number one, uh, there are some probably higher ranking, if they're in this room, Mornish uh, soldiers. Oh, in here. Uh, and as well, there's like just some other, like definitely like well-dressed, well-to-do uh, noblemen of some sort. Um, sort of, you know, a couple small groups of, of various of them. There's sort of the one group of the, the Mornish um, sort of officers, we'll call them. And then, uh, yeah, a couple of groups of sort of other nobles around the room. Uh, we'll say like three other sort of small groups that are sort of quietly chatting around their own tables. Um, in terms of, if you want to give me an insight check, uh, I can, yeah, maybe one of them will sort of stand out a little bit more for some information. Uh, 
right, pretty good. Um, so I will say like one of the groups of nobles, um, you you sort of like they're close enough, you managed to overhear sort of a bit of conversation about um, talking to the governor um, about uh, sort of the, the recent events and sort of being shocked at what had happened. Um, so there's potentially sort of somebody at that table that uh, that might know a little bit more about uh, what happened. Okay, so we'll come back to that in just a moment. Yep. All right, so at the Bell Emporium, uh, you walk inside is a very large uh, sort of sword compared to what you're used to, and there's sort of, yeah, there's several different areas, most of which are things that none of you would ever consider buying. Um, they're sort of all higher end uh, things. Um, but yes, there is definitely sort of a, a small corner uh, uh, towards sort of the one side towards the back uh, that seems to be dedicated to um, uh, magical wares and items. Um, so yes, assuming you head there, a um, couple things that jump out at you. I'm just gonna do this really quickly. What do we have? <laughs> there is a pair of bracers that are there. Um, what else? Well, three times on this tables. Ooh. Uh, a very nice looking uh, set of studded leather armor. And dragon scale mail. Okay, so those are sort of the big things that jump out of you. There's probably some, a couple of sort of smaller things other peppered around. Um, what would you like to do? I think mostly browsing. I, I don't know, like apart from the, the bracers, like we were there when we were told to look out for them, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I don't know that would Mint notice them? Probably. She's got a pretty good perception. These bracers um, stand out not because they look ornate or because they look... Um, fancy, but because they look incredibly old and worn and well used, and yet are still sort of in, in decent condition for that state. Weird. Yeah. I always worry when shopping that somebody is like watching over you, just waiting for you to pick out an item and then they chat you up about it. So I'm just going to like look left and right and just see if there is somebody can... like in the magical items area that is, you know, sort of they've been sticking, you know, standing just a little bit, uh, you know, away from things at the moment. Uh, mm -hmm. We'll say there's a sort of a pleasant, you know, human woman. So like, yeah, if you need anything, just let me know. And otherwise, it's sort of, you know, quietly standing in a corner. Yeah, called it. <laughs> but where did where did Torok wander off to? I'm assuming he's with you. Are you? Are yeah, you he's also around? looking at the dragon scale male. Oh, is that disturbing to you? <laughs> which which dragon is it? That's an excellent question. We'll say it's oh, white. God, is it a lightning one? Say it's white dragon. Okay, at least it wasn't your kind. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. So a rather pristine, like with like silver uh, sort of accents, uh, you know, white dragon scale male. You, you just you could tell the Torx just doesn't know how he feels about this. <laughs> yep. Okay. How you doing, buddy? It would be like wearing a relative. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're not going to wear it, are you? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. Do you know what this would be like for you? <laughs> too big. The answer is too big. <laughs> it's Torak follows you. He's just, just shaking his head. <laughs> I will ask about the uh, braces. What type of braces are these? Oh, these are um, from uh, the, the Elder Times, from uh, before the Mage War, I believe. Um, and 
are quite um, quite impressive. Now, uh, unfortunately, they do have a bit of a downside to them. I, I will be honest with you. I'm not going to sell you anything that you know we don't tell you everything about. Uh, these are bracers of um, mutual annihilation. Seems safe. That sounds terrible. <laughs> and what exactly does that mean? Well, uh, when uh, the the wearer of the braces uh, strikes with a, a weapon of some sort, uh, they would inflict uh, an incredible amount of damage, uh, excess uh, damage to, to their foe. However, um, they also inflict a, a little bit uh, upon themselves as well. Not as much. Much as a little bit. Uh, so yes, in game, uh, the do, 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 as a bonus action, the user can inflict four times their player character level in radiant damage in conjunction with a successful attack roll to their foe. They also inflict twice the user's level in radiant damage to themselves. Jeez, these, these uh, that's bracers. a little bit, is it? <laughs> yeah, these <laughs> bracers have talent written all over them. <laughs> <laughs> these are bracers of defense. <laughs> Best defense is a good offense. <laughs> yep, that is what I randomly rolled for the three big items in this store. All right. Wow. There's uh, several other smaller items, uh, sort of, you know, probably a few potions and scrolls and sort of other uh, smaller things. Uh, if you want me to roll a few times and see if it comes up, I can do that. Or you, if you want to sort of see if there's anything specific you're looking for, you can let me know. Now, if they have scrolls, are they going to have spell scrolls? And are the spell scrolls going to cost the same amount as the spells from the um, other way? Yeah, so they probably have a nice locked case um, with scrolls um, that would only be accessible by uh, those who are in the um, uh, the Wizards Guild, or the, the okay. yes, Mages Guild. Um, but yes, assuming you show your newly acquired... Uh, um, Limited membership card. Yes. Um, <laughs> uh, then yes, they would they would uh, have sort of spells that are accessible. Um, let me sort of just pick some random. Yeah. Then I'll find out if they're going to cost the same amount, if they cost less, if they cost more. Um, they are probably going to cost slightly more here. Okay. For roughly the same level of spell. Uh, although it's a spell scroll. Uh, so yeah, you're still essentially buying the spell. You still have to copy it into your spell book. So yep. yeah, it might actually end up being, uh, well, maybe about roughly the same price, but you'd still have to do the sort of uh, scribing costs. Um, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, roll a d20 for me. Okay. I mean, if it's going to be the same or more, I'm just, I'm not All going right. to bother. All right. That's fair. That's... Yeah. Things are expensive here. Um, uh, yes. And if you're looking for any other sort of other small items, uh, you can let me know. Otherwise, I'll roll a couple of times on each of these tables just for fun, and I can describe what uh, those are. Um, ooh. Mm. There's an immovable rod. How did it get there? <laughs> and a potion of gaseous form. How much is the immovable rod? Uh, probably about a thousand gold pieces. Uh, Can you break what's, a five thousand? What? Yeah. What's the what's the place down by the shore there? Uh, that is the sapphire. I'm sure things will be cheaper there. Oh, right. And that was the boutique yeah. place. All right. So, yeah. Actually, Tor is also keeping his eye out on upgraded hand axes or javelins. There's a fine looking chef's hat. <laughs> I know. 
No, it's just I was thinking because I originally was thinking about buying the hat that Jacob had. <laughs> but then it's like, oh, I could buy a chef's hat. Uh, <laughs> there's a, a sort of a, a small wand uh, and a weapon. Uh, um, an axe, you say, of some sort? Uh, either a small throwing axe or a javelin. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say that um, there is a, a spear, essentially, which would sort of function like a javelin, uh, sort of sort of a shorter spear, a smaller spear, um, that uh, is sort of hanging on the, on the wall at one point. And it's got sort of nice sort of delicate runes sort of carved in the entire length of the, uh, the shaft. Torak asks about the, the spear. Uh, so yes, it is a, it's a magical weapon, mystical weapon, uh, that when thrown, uh, I believe the range is, is increased, uh, that it can cover and it would, uh, it would return to the wielder after thrown. Interesting. And how much are you asking for it? Uh, for that one, um, about 2,000 gold pieces. Good to know. <laughs> Turok wanders over. Nice spear, not a nice price. <laughs> and what kind of wand is it? It is a wand of pyrotechnics. Uh, which, uh, to do, as in Xanathar's, I believe it just does essentially um, effects similar to a uh, prestidigitation. Um, but yes, you can sort of use that to create those effects whenever you like. Uh, where's the uh, wands in here? You can use an action to expend one of its charges and create a harmless burst of multicolored light. At a point you can see up to 60 feet away, the burst of light is accompanied by a crackling noise that can be heard up to 300 feet away. The light is as bright as a torch flame, but lasts only a second. That's it. So it creates fireworks. Okay. All right. Uh, then Leon suggests, I suggest, do we move on to the boutique? Only 75 gold. All right. Uh, so back to the other group. Um, you have had uh, a few drinks. Um, how are you uh, feeling and how would you like to sort of proceed? Did Wisp get right. into the bar? She, Oops, she arrived at our table, right? Uh, yes, Miss Biz yes. there. So as, uh, so as she sits down, I am going to point out the group that was talking about the going-ons in the city. All right. OK. Not that I was going to go over there. I'm enjoying this beer right now. It is uh, quite <laughs> delicious. But I knew you were interested in gathering information. I mean, I'm interested in gathering information. Yeah. So if you go gather and let me know what's, uh, what they said, that's like both of us going. Wisp says, you're right. Um, and <laughs> uh, how, how would she want to do this? I'm trying to decide if she would actually walk right up to them. I don't think that she would do that. Um, I think that, uh, so what time is it now? It's mid-morning-ish. Mid-morning-ish. So like 10 o'clock. So there's still a couple hours before her set. Yes. Okay. Okay, so Wisp is going to say to Jacob, well, uh, so I got in and I'm going to be, I'm going to be performing, but I'm not going to be performing until like 2.30 here. Um, they're letting you perform? Wisp says, <laughs> I know, and they're going to pay me. They're going to give me 100, well, it was 100 gold, right? 100 gold pieces, can you believe it? No, I cannot. She says, she says I usually play for like room and board and they're just going to give me all this money. I thought they wanted me to pay that to, to play here. <laughs> it's just so nice. And um, 
uh, she does have. Remind me why we're going on adventures and risking our lives again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just stay in the city. You're fine. There's lots of <laughs> things that could happen here. There's ghosts to talk to. And... Yeah. Sure. She says, well, because we get to meet very interesting people and learn fun stories, Jacob. Um... That's worth 100 gold, too. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so she is going to go um, get changed somewhere. She has fine clothes. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so well, you're just, like not far from the end. You can always go back. Yeah. To the end, so. so I think yeah, that's probably what she's going to do. She says, "She says I'll be right back. I'm going to change into my into my nicer clothes um, <clears throat> before I uh, try to talk to uh, those those people over there." Hmm. All right. So yeah, we'll say you can sort of make it there and back relatively quickly. You come back in some very fine clothes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I think what she's going to do is she's going to kind of um, make like she's she's making the rounds, just being like, oh, I'm performing here later. What are your favorite stories? What are your favorite songs? And trying to just kind of like get the get the crowd's interest. And so she'll go to like a couple random tables before then, but then she's going to target those, <laughs> the um, the more yep. soldiers who are, who are talking and and so say, these aren't the mortar soldiers this is just a group of nobles oh, okay i thought you said they were oh there oh, is yeah. a group of mortar soldiers but if it's the nobles that yes yeah. i see this particular yeah. group who is talking about yes. what she wants to learn about. Yeah. <laughs> um so so she's going to walk up to the table she's going to say uh uh she's going to say hello hello uh my name is shadows whisper in the cliffs i'm from the um wow i just blanked on the name of the mountains uh, the Thurin Range. Thank you. I'm from the Thurin Range from, from far away, and I'm here today. I'm going to be performing later this afternoon. I'm going to be telling some stories and singing some songs, and I just want to make sure that I, that I understand the needs of such a, such a new and fine and diverse crowd. And what are your favorite stories? Are, is there anything interesting happening now that I can kind of riff on? And she'll take out her veal and, and strum a little, like, no, I guess not strum, mm. like kind of or, or pluck a couple notes just yeah. to show that she is a bard. She's not just a random person claiming to be a bard. Yep. Um, well, um, there's uh, the, the tale of Azra. Uh, I've always liked that one. Um, and oh, what, uh, what are some other interesting stories? Oh, oh for, um, this table from our table. Um, yeah, like if you're listening intently, you can probably overhear what they're saying. Okay. Um, uh, there's um, Old K and the Giant. Uh, that that was a, an interesting one. Uh, that's from. Uh, I'm not sure if you know that one. That's, that's a pretty uh, local legend. Um, have you heard of that one before? I have not heard of that one before. I would love to learn more about this. And she's just gonna kind of like. I guess it's not really surreptitious, but she's gonna she's gonna pull up a chair and, and sit with them. All right. Um, so uh, g give me just a a charisma check. Just to see, sort okay. of, yeah. Um, Actually, no, you can make a persuasion. That's a solid persuasion check. check. Sure. Oh, all right. Very low. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, wait. Wait. I need to double check something. I have something where there's certain rolls where I can't roll lower than a 10. Oh, right, yes. Um, but I just need to check which rolls those are. Well, she checks. Yes, tell, tell that's us. one of them. Uh, when I make a charisma persuasion, when I make a persuasion or a deception check, I can treat a d20 roll of nine or lower as a 10. Okay, so, that so that's a 20. Is actually <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so yes, you are welcome at their table. You are a fascinating new uh, creature that they have, you know, never seen before. Um, mm -hmm. They tell you of Volke and the Giant, which is sort of a uh, an ancient legend of sort of these areas of a essentially a, a small boy who befriends a giant, um, and when sort of the the boy's you know village is threatened, he you know has the giant come and. Uh, you know, scare away the the the, the raiders, uh, and then the boy actually does you know some some uh, pleasant things for the giant as well, and he you know helps him get into sort of some small places for a treasure that he can't find and that sort of stuff. So yes, there's sort of a wandering tale about these two. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they get to chatting and sort of open up uh, a little bit. Um, did you want to try to ask about the other recent events? Yes. Um... 
so she's going to uh, she's going to make a show of like taking taking notes like she takes out a scroll of paper and she's kind of like mm-hmm. jotting jotting down some some notes about about the story because she does also love the story um um and let's see she, so she knows that the rumors are about some small non-human or like a child right a yep. non-human child um so so she's going to say oh the uh, your 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 tale of okay and and the giant it just is 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 making me think of another story that i've been that i've been hearing around is it a, is it a myth or is it a, is it a rumor of some some young girl who's been who's been kidnapped like what's what's and yeah the one of them sort of goes off and me is like oh it's just <laughs> it's horrible i mean the the governor <sighs> I guess he's he's a Mornish governor, and, and there's that. But he's he's been quite good to the nobles of the city, and and sort of, um, you know, we we have we have prospered. Uh, well, well, the 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 Mornish have been here, um, and yes, it was. Um, uh, I need to pull that up. Uh, it was about uh, two months ago, I believe. Yes, two months that. Uh, this this young girl uh, came uh, to to the city um, from uh, a foreign land. She was she was quite uh, mysterious. I I don't even know what she looks like. She was kept uh, sort of hidden and, and cloaked most of the time. Um, uh, in the one time that I was sort of able to get get, get close, um, but apparently she has strange power. She has visions and can see uh, the future. She, um, yes, the the, uh, the the governor, um, you know, took her under his his wing and and cared for her, uh, and then yes, so horribly, the the resistance um, kidnapped her. It just just the other day, uh, it was it was a, a vicious attack. Um, I, I mean, thankfully, many of the resistance were slain in the attack, but also some of our our Mornish protectors were were slain as well, and they got away with the girl. That's why the city has been completely locked down. There's a, a search for this girl. The, the governor is, is you know, furious that uh, she's been stolen away. Have we heard about this resistance before now? Just to... Um, probably not officially, um, but you probably have heard, like, even way before you even got to the city, that there is a resistance in Rukin and specifically in Razaval um, that has sort of been against the Moorish presence. Is this right. resistance at all tied to, like, Mint's group? It is not. Okay, so, so Wisp uh, says, says, Oh wow, that sounds terrible. Why would the resistance yes. want to want to kidnap her? Well, if she can see the future, I mean, from from everything I've heard, the resistance has been um, not doing so well, <laughs> thankfully, uh, since uh, the the governor had had uh, taken you know care of, of the charge of this this girl. Um, she had been having some visions about where the resistance might strike, and they've been able to foil some of their 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 attempts to to disrupt the city. Um, so yes, I can see why they might want to to stop that. But who knows what they're going to do to this girl? They might they might kill her. I mean that would just be, I mean I wouldn't put it past them. But oh jeez, yes. Or they might use the, her powers for evil. Who knows? Uh, and and Wisp says, "Has the resistance ever done something so terrible?" Oh, yes. <laughs> the resistance has, has done many horrible things to disrupt the commerce of the city. There was a, there was there were several attacks upon um, caravans and upon ships. Um, there has been uh, nobles who have gone uh, missing and, and you know, turned up days later with their minds all befuddled. Oh yes, it was a very very. Very nasty group fat. Mm, and the but this girl hasn't reappeared like the other nobles. No, 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 no. Okay, so I think uh, at this point, Wisp feels like she's she's gotten on the information, so she's just gonna um, uh, she, she'll change the subject to something like um, you know, oh, but has uh, no, she can't. She doesn't know enough to fake a conversation about commerce. Uh, she's gonna say, <laughs> she's gonna say some, 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 something like, 
like tr- just trying to change the subject to mm. their to their business and I'm like oh, oh and they're happy to talk about their various you know business and interests and that sort of thing it's and it's less about sort of business and more about the investments that they have made yeah. and how you know a lot of their investments in shipping are not doing so well right now because everything's been locked down but you know they understand that at least those sort of things so yeah 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 so she she's gonna like get let them like start basically talking among themselves and then and then just kind of like politely slip away after yes. a couple minutes and then she'll return to the table with uh, Talon and Jacob and explain all of yeah. the things that she learned which well, they might have heard some but yeah yeah there you go you got some information well, all right uh, anything yes Talon and Jacob that you want to Talon how's your orange how's your juice doing while well, she's talking over there and we can't have listen <laughs> Quite good, quite tasty. I, I know. We've, I know we've been traveling a bit, but do you just not? Do you not drink alcohol? Uh, rarely. I did once, mm-hmm. the first night after the Shadow Forest. <laughs> that was a lot for you. It, it's at rare occasions. <laughs> See, I, I feel you need to find something that you really enjoy. So let's try a few things. Uh, bartender, I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> ask for like a nice <laughs> dram of whiskey. Uh, one of their okay. like topper shelf bottles. Yep, yep. They, they. Uh, if you're you're getting the whole bottle. No, no, no. Just a, a finger each. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they they bring you a sort of a shot each. That's probably going to be, um, probably about five silvers each. Um, I pay for it, honestly. Yep. Uh, yeah. So uh, there's a nice little sort of a shot of of this, you know, beautiful sort of dark liquid. Now with this, you don't guzzle it down. Just take it sipping at a time. Hmm. Smell the the the, blu- the bouquet, <laughs> just start going, up. and then just for fun, I think Jacob's a bit of a troublemaker. I'm gonna go into describing the history of of where this came from, which is really suspect considering how much of his memory's gone. But he knows about the history of this liquor. All right, um, yeah, you can. I mean, you can roll a deception check if you really want to, um, but <laughs> yeah, it depends how much you might actually know about this particular whiskey, but I'm assuming if it's a, a local one, you may not know as much, but yeah, you, you can say as much as you like. Yep. <laughs> yep. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> this whiskey is, it was made by a man named Whisk, uh, and he took a big whisk in making this whiskey, and it was... Okay. <laughs> All right. yeah. Given the role, I mean, Talon's probably just going to go along with whatever he said, but Jacob's probably fumbling a little bit as he's coming up with the story. Um, that first beer really hit. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you really know about whiskey? Pardon? Do you really know about whiskey? Yes. Whiskey is derived from the word whisk. Whisk is the twin brother of our companion Wisp. He's only missing a P. (laughs) (laughs) Tom will chuckle on the inside. But, this uh, is a really strong ale, Talon. <laughs> you know, have I ever said how much I've enjoyed your company? These, these, these. Uh, he, he didn't notice until now. Like that, that ale that he got was probably about thirteen yeah. percent. I've enjoyed your companionship, Talon. I know we don't talk a lot, but we should talk more. I think. I, I've enjoyed yours as well. This has been an interesting group, but um, but good people. Indeed, good people. Let's drink to the good people. Bartender! <laughs> you haven't even had your first whiskey yet. <laughs> oh, it's here! Okay, cheers. Uh, Talon's like, I don't usually, but I will make an exception. All right. <laughs> so we've, we've gone, I'm, I'm interested. We've, we've kind of, after everything that happened at the temple, hmm. Where where do you like? I have I struggle myself because I have no idea what my purpose in life is. There's just so much unknown about me, and and your life has been wildly un, un upended. Where do you see yourself going? These this uh, now a, a very good question. I, I I feel indebted to the Archmage, naturally, with everything that has happened. 
But beyond that, I, I feel I just have much atoning to do. I've done many things which I'm not proud of, which at the time I did not think I had a choice. But now it seems that I did. So I must make, make amends. If not for the people whom I've wronged, at least do something good to balance. Then he'll you. take a half a shot of the whiskey. Nice. And, and I, I drink with you. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> it is smooth. Yeah. Very warm. This is like this is nice yeah. whiskey. <laughs> is it always this warm? Is this mm. magical? It doesn't feel warm. It is it, not magic in the way you would think, but the, the people that create this are artisans. <laughs> we, perhaps we should get a bottle for remembrance of this time, and occasionally down the road we can sit and enjoy another dram of this. I would like that. Excellent. I, I will buy a bottle for, for down the road. All Ooh. right. Uh, let's see, a bottle would be about... Got to subtract coin off me. Yeah. I'm going to say about like 50 gold. Sure. I can, I can contribute. No, no, I insist this is on me. Hmm. Well, thank you. All right. Uh, yes, and then wisp, wisp. <laughs> yes, wisp, it's not wisp. Ah, oh, God, I'm so confused. Uh, wisp will rejoin you and sort of explain yeah, some of what she's learned. Um, and we'll yeah, so quickly jump over to the other group. Uh, I think uh, if everyone's okay, we'll just sort of do another non-break this week and just go to about uh, 9.30 or so and uh, see where that takes us. Um, unless people really need a break. How are we feeling? Yes, no? All right. All right. Uh, so yes, you get to the Sapphire. Um, oh. And um, again, I'm just going to pick a sort of three interesting items off the list here. Ooh. What is that? I'm curious. I'm in the right book. It always helps when you're in the right book. Um, there it is. Oh, that's nice. Okay. Uh, so, um, for the sake of fun, we'll say that there is a, a rather nice looking axe. Uh, there is also a, uh, a bag, uh, and what was the other one? Oh, an amulet. I need to pull up that. Okay. It looks like the map hasn't refreshed because we're still... Oh, sorry, that's me. ...up, and we should be down by the seaside. Uh, why isn't it going? Oh, I know why. Sorry. Boom. Yay. Let's just do it. So Turok will definitely ask about the axe. Um, it's a very nice uh, axe. Um, again, sort of, it's not ornate, but it is sort of exquisitely put together. Um, it is an axe of warning. Uh, so it warns you of danger. Uh, while you have it, you have advantage on initiative rolls. In addition, uh, you and any uh, companions within 30 feet cannot be surprised, except when incapacitated. Um, also awakens you and your companions within range if you are sleeping when combat begins. Interesting. Yes, it is, I believe, though, not cheap. Um, yeah, 2,500 gold. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> Not to mention, the only thing that that would get help Turok with is really the waking up from a sleep. Otherwise, he already has the advantages. Yeah. Uh, there's also a bag of tricks. We're also about 2,500 gold. And an amulet of the devout um, for 6,500 gold. 
Hey, yeah. Turok just looks at looks at Leon. We are in the wrong end of town, my friend. There are a few other uh, smaller items. Uh, I'll sort of run down the next list here. Give me just a moment. Um, uh, oh, Mint, you see a nicer version of your boots. Um, they're also lesser boots of speed. They just happen to be slightly newer and nicer. Um, Mine are broken in. They're super comfy. Exactly. Um, there is, ooh, a, a mantle, a sort of a, a sort of a shawl-like uh, thing, and what's the last one? Ooh, there is a little box of icy mints. Like uh, my name. Which, uh, yeah, uh, they work a lot like the pyromaniac peppers that uh, Jacob has. Uh, upon eating one, you can breathe a cone of ice for 2d6 damage and feel minty fresh for days. <laughs> right. There are three uh, uses in the small canister. Okay. I have a feeling that we walk in, we look around, we find out how much everything is, we look at each other, we walk out. That's fair. All right. Okay. Um, yeah. 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 That I sounds guess, right. <laughs> I guess I uh, go to the library. All right. I, I'm interested in the library as well. All right. Um, Torak, did you want to check out the other magical shop or head to the library? Uh, Torak will actually check out the other magical shop. Oh, we haven't picked up any uh, rations yet. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So again, at the first place you stopped, they would have been way too sort of fancy and expensive. Um, probably the area of town where Torak is heading into the Green District, you're going to find something that's at least slightly more reasonable. Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, I will do sort of one more quick roll here for the last magic shop. Let's uh, see what yeah. we get. I don't go with to the, yep. to the Gnome Depot, but I ask them to check and see if they do actually sell spells in the location and find out mm. how much they are. Yeah. Um, this one does not have spells. Okay. Uh, there is a sickle uh, for a weapon. Um, mm -hmm. A potion of vitality. That's that's only, that's only about a thousand gold. Um, and what's that? A wand that Torak would probably not be interested in. No. I'll do sort of a roll or two on this table. <laughs> oh, Dark might like this. But my own might be interested in the wand, maybe. <laughs> um, I think we've actually had this in one of the other uh, areas. This is the bigger knife. Um, it is a large dagger that provides a plus one to hit and plus one to intimidation and will grow to be slightly larger than anyone else's dagger in the room. <laughs> Oh, that is weird. On a failed intimidation check, the knife will turn into a spoon until dawn. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. Oh, that is so beautiful. That sounds like a mint weapon. Yeah, it really I'm does. Be honest, it really it's, does. Uh, it's on sale today uh, for only 250 gold pieces. But I didn't go with you, did I? I went to the library. No, but you can pick it up for a minute if you wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Torak so would. Oh, jeez. So would. Yeah, Torak's doing it. All right. He's going to try to... He's, he's learned. He's going to channel little Jacob and try to talk them down to 200. All right. Give me a persuasion check. Uh... I think I don't think he gets a bonus to that at all. So actually, that would that would be oh, you know, plus three. He does. What if there are two people who each have one of these oh, growing no. daggers? <laughs> uh, you get them down to about uh, so it was two fifty. You were trying to talk them down to two hundred. Um, you get them down to about one seventy five. Okay. <laughs> you realize that you're a big person 
and you're talking to a very small person maybe like the owner left their child in charge of the shop for a moment they're not quite sure they rolled a one so <laughs> like 175 done um there's also a tome of summon cat <laughs> that would work on our tabaxi <laughs> I love this one. So shortly after the user attempts to read this book, a cat will appear from nowhere and lounge on it. Um, repeated testing confirms the cat can walk through walls and its origin is wherever it feels like. Once per week, it will grant one of the below blessings to one attuned uh, to the one attuned to the tome for one hour. And the blessings are advantage on stealth, advantage on perception, uh, advantage on survival or dark vision. No, I... um, that uh, is also on sale for uh, 90 gold pieces. And what's the last item? I'm having some fun with this list. Um, ooh, what is that? Uh, did you? No. Uh, didn't. Oh, I'm looking in the wrong book. Uh, did you? Yeah, yeah, that's more for sorcerers. It's a little vial of ink. Um, all right. So yes, uh, you can have the the bigger knife for 175 gold. Uh, and if you want the tome of cat thrown in and bundled together, you can get them for uh, 250. What does the tome of cat do again? Sorry, it summons a cat, cat that it once a week will bless you. <laughs> With cat-like abilities. Uh, wait, wait, it includes night vision, though, doesn't it? Yep. Dark vision. Yeah, no, Torok's buying that. Yeah, <laughs> 75 extra gold. Yeah. Yeah, dark vision. Yeah, once somewhere, a week. I'll somewhere take else it. in the city, uh, uh, Wisp's ear just keeps twitching. <laughs> twitching, twitching. <laughs> like, there you can go. I pause at it. She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I think both of those are special ones I'll have to, to make up so I can add those in. I'm going to need you to make something else also. Okay. The bottle of whiskey that Tal uh, Talon and I shared is called the Mahogany Cudgel. It's named by one of our viewers. The Mahogany uh, Cudgel. Nice. The cudgel. I love it. Nice. It's whiskey. All right. Um, yes, a very fine bottle of whiskey. And we also have the... Sorry to interrupt. Uh, no, that's okay. Tome of cat. And <laughs> um, bigger knife. All right. Um, and we'll sort of slip back to the other group for just a moment. So yes, you've uh, sort of getting probably closer to noon by this point. You've been sitting, enjoying some, some very fine uh, liquor. Um, Anything else you wanted to do with this establishment? Does it seem like anyone else is in is um, talking about anything interesting? A few people sort of coming and going. The, the Mornish officers um, sort of leave. Um, and there's a um, sort of a group of, of sort of young women that, that they come in and sort of, you know, get a table and bit of a corner and sort of giggling to themselves a little bit. But uh, yeah, they they seem to be coming in because uh, in a moment, uh, sort of the stage lights up with this uh, rather beautiful uh, elven man who comes out uh, and uh, has you know beautiful singing voice and performs for sort of several you know sets of music in these sort of lilting sort of elven ballads, and they are all sort of thoroughly enraptured by this. Okay. Um, I think Wisp is probably going to ask the bartender if they know um, of 
anywhere else in town where they where they might hear more about the rumors going around um so yeah there isn't actually really a bartender uh, the drinks are all sort of coming from a back room but you can ask sort of your your yeah waiter, um okay. uh who's like oh well if you want to hear about sort of things going on in town uh, what sort of things do you want to hear about like uh, local events do you want to hear about uh you like rumors of of you know the the darker side of things uh wisp says more of the latter. I, I, you know, I, I'm a bard. I trade in stories and rumors. It's like, well, you know, I probably shouldn't be telling you this, but <laughs> says, that's okay. You can tell me anything. My sister works at a, a less reputable uh, place across the river. Um, and uh, yes, if you if you let her know that that I sent you, maybe she's heard uh, something. You could you could inquire there. Uh, Wisp says um, that would be most helpful. Uh, she wants to slip him a tip. Um, but she doesn't have a lot of money, so she's gonna elbow Jacob. She's gonna say, <laughs> she's gonna say, Jacob, give him a tip so he tells us more stuff. <laughs> I fling a, a silver over. I fling a silver at you. <laughs> I'm busy talking to Talon. We are opening up to each other. is a beautiful thing. Why would you want to ruin that? Here, I ignore most of what he said, and I and I take and I take the silver and I. Present it to the present it to the waiter and 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 say, um, I happy to to give you this in exchange for information. Uh, what's the name of the what's the name of the place and the name of your sister? Um, my sister's name is um, uh, Daphne. So D E F N E. Mm -hmm. Um. And the uh, place she works in, like, really lowers her voice for this, is <clears throat> uh, the affections of Akara. <laughs> okay. Um... They cater to all sorts. You know, I'm trying to decide if Wisp would immediately think that slash realize <laughs> what sort of establishment that is. I don't think she would. So, so she's going to say, oh, well, that, okay, that sounds great. How uh, will we know who your sister is? Oh, um, that, yes. I mean, she looks um, sort of like me. Um, but uh, she has um, used some, some uh, uh, they say it's magical. I don't think it's magical. Uh, but she's got this sort of pink streak in her hair. Well, thank you very much. We'll be on the lookout for a lovely young lady with a pink streak in her hair. Yes, yes. And you can at, tell her I, I sent you. Yes. At the affections of Akara. And she probably says that a little bit too loudly. <laughs> Cringes a little bit saying, yes, 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 yes. That is that is definitely a place. <clears throat> and they slightly, yes, blushing, sort of head back. Um, yeah, so assuming you're sort of heading there, uh, it'll take you a little while to sort of get uh, around the river, unless you mm -hmm. want to take a ferry across. But, Wisp, don't uh, you have to play? Yeah, exactly. Wisp has to Where are you going, it. Wisp? Yeah. <laughs> She's got to play at 2.30. She's got to play at 2.30. <laughs> She's gotta play at 2 30. She says, don't worry, Jacob, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> Should I stay here and drink? I mean, I'll stay here. I'll hang out with you. Okay. <laughs> Do you need a water? Maybe. <laughs> Whisp, Whisp summons the waiter to, to bring water. What was the waiter's name? I, I don't think I asked. I, I don't think I gave her a name. Um, uh, Kadri. Kadri and Daphne. All right. Well, Wisp calls... Uh, 
Audrey right. over and says, I think my friend needs a little bit of water. <laughs> Would you like sparkling water? Wisp says, what is that? Uh, it is water that has been enchanted in sparkles. Oh, yes, that sounds delightful. Okay. Uh, that will be uh, four gold, uh, sorry, four, sil <laughs> four silver. For <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I almost did like more. <laughs> four, four silver for, for some sparkling water. Uh, all right. I um, just hand the money, without even saying anything, I just hand the money over to Wisp. <laughs> So yes, it comes out in actually a, a, a sort of a picture of it, but it's got like little fireworks going off over top of it. And it sort of fizzles on the tongue just a little bit. Wisp is enchanted and delighted by the sparkling water. All right. Um, so we have a few minutes left. Uh, what is happening at the library? Um, Leona's gonna find out if there is a teleportation circle in town. Hmm. Is there a teleportation circle in town? I actually have that information. Uh, give me a sec. I mean, that might have come up. I'm realizing that might have come up at the Mages Guild. Yes. Uh, let me give me one sec. Where is that? Uh, there it is. Okay. The document that's a little too large here. Uh, do, 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 do. Teleportation circles. <clears throat> There's a teleportation circle in town. It is probably at um, it is probably at the um, Mage's Guild, actually. Okay, cool. I mean, so if possible, because once I can cast fifth level spells, I'll be interested in. I will be taking teleportation circle. Mm -hmm. So, and I think when you get that spell, you know a couple of teleportation yep. circles. So if we can just assume that this is one of the ones that I look at and transcribe in preparation for yep. casting that spell at some point in the future. The other one you would probably know uh, relatively well is the one um, in your hometown. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Yep. Um, awesome. And then I guess I'll just um, do some research on um, on Jacob's condition, see if I oh. can find anything. Uh, so like specifically on lost memory or on uh, any, anything else? No, I'm trying to figure out more about the ghost and <clears throat> okay. stuff like that. Give me an investigation check. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Unfortunately, there's there's not much you can find. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 That's that's again. There's some you you what you find confirms what the ghost told you. I guess is what is that much. So the 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 experiences that Jacob sort of talks about and um, uh, has described are not consistent with regular ghost sort of appearances uh, for the dead. Okay. Yep. Cool. Okay. Uh, and Mint, uh, you were at the library. Anything you're looking up? Um, because we're in a, a place that is on uh, kind of like enemy territory, I'm interested in looking into to history books just to see what their take on things is. And I don't want to ask any librarians for help with looking no. up these books. I just want to wander over to the, the history section and just just see what the victors have recorded. Uh, yeah, so what, what you notice, uh, just sort of without any rules, is that um, 
there seemed to be some history books missing. <laughs> oh, um, gee. <laughs> wonder, and, wonder. Yeah. Not just checked out, right? Like, yeah, gone. just yeah. conspicuously not there. Um, and uh, yeah, a lot of sort of the the more recent history of Razaval has sort of been uh, sort of taken off. The ancient history is sort of still there, um, or at least what is known of the ancient history um, and sort of the beginnings of the city. And then, yeah, the the more recent history within the last nine or 10 years is all about the empire and uh, sort of the glorious uh, liberation of Razaval from, you know, the tyrant king that had, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, give me an investigation check, though. I will uh, sure. see if there's one little bit of information we can. Investigate. Oh, it's down here. Do, 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 do. And at some point, Tora's going to come in and enthusiastically in the middle of the library show me the knife. <laughs> if you're allowed to bring a weapon in, which I guess we are. Um. Yeah, I'm going to say that they're like, if... You are with a wizard who is a part of the guild? Oh, that was sad. That was a sad investigation check. <laughs> uh, yeah, so you know, there's not, not really much you find that's that's of interest. Uh, and yes, Torak will come and sort of brandish a knife at you. Um, that is a considerably good-sized knife. Cool. I, I, for you. Well, thank you. I, I compare I compare it to um, my my existing knife. Uh, let's see. It is bigger. It's bigger. <laughs> Fantastic. Does it does it feel about the same weight as I, I kind of hold it in my? It actually hand? feels quite light um, for its nice. size, and it's uh, sort of Torox hand around the the grip of it. It seems like it's going to be a knife that's way too big to you. But sort of handing it down to you, like your hand fits perfectly around the grip. It's just the blade that just gets really, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So that's better than my regular run of the mill dagger. Oh yeah. yeah. Cool. Cool. I'm 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 very satisfied with this knife. Thank you. What what's the occasion? It just screamed you. <laughs> Is and it a screaming Tork knife? Screaming knife. <laughs> <laughs> throws Man. the book. <laughs> <laughs> You, you show me the book? Yeah. Okay. Dark vision. <laughs> but it, it looks like it's a one in six chance that you get that. And it's not really up to you. I think it's up to the cat. That's how nice you are to the cat. Hmm. I can be nice. <laughs> <laughs> just, you can be nice. <laughs> every, every sort of, you know, off scene where you're not sort of fighting, just Doris got the book and sort of a cat and petting it. <laughs> <laughs> Leaving fish bribes. Dark fish. Oh, they really like that. <laughs> okay. okay. So you've given me a screaming knife. Lovely. Appreciate that. Only for your enemies. Stab. Does it hurt now? Shut up, knife. Does it hurt now? <laughs> all oh, right. Well, there goes all my stealth. Awesome. <laughs> I, I didn't have much to begin with, but now it's all gone. <laughs> um. <laughs> so, does Torok um, ever explain that properly? <laughs> He does eventually get to okay. the actual okay. explaining. Okay. Uh, anything else planned for like the afternoon? I know uh, Wisp has uh, her, her performance. Um, anything else sort of that we were the groups, was the group going to sort of meet up for, you know, dinner or, or sort of meet back at the room and see um, what they discovered? Yeah, um, we were going to meet back in the room and then decide about um, secret right. test. And secret test. Probably share the information that's been found out right. about what's going but on. That was there. going to be at dinner. Won't the performance yeah. Yeah. be at two thirty before dinner? Well, yeah. So, uh, Wisp, um, give us a performance check. Holy wow! <laughs> um, yeah, like 
everybody at the the in the in this establishment is, is quite enraptured uh by uh wisp's performance including the slightly new take on the old tale of um old k and the giant um they they, they really love that uh, there's even sort of some people that that you know come in from outside and, and are quite uh in in you know enjoying the performance as well um yeah the once you sort of you, you finish your your set and, and 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 leave the the mistress will sort of approach you and it's like that was that was a very pleasant um uh a set that you did there um given some of the the uh take that that was was made at the tables uh we are going to give you a bonus of 20 gold um for for that performance um and you are welcome back anytime you like uh and uh, maybe we could schedule in for a a, 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 a better time slot next time if you'd <laughs> like as well <laughs> wisp says wow thank you this is a lovely establishment you have here i would be happy to come back sometime <laughs> um, but she doesn't make a commitment as to when <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so um, I will. I'll sort of say this much for sort of uh, you know the, the afternoon sort of you know goes on. Uh, you will meet back at the inn, um, and as you are just sort of coming together, we'll say sort of the two groups are approaching the inn at roughly about the same time, uh, coming back for perhaps the the dinner service. Mm -hmm. um, you are approaching the inn at the same time that there is a group that's coming out of the inn. And the group that's coming out is um, a very specific, like very, um, what's the word I'm looking for? They stand out. Uh, there is a, a, like clearly a, uh, a, a sort of a, a caster of some sort in like very um, elegant robes. Um, there's with them probably you're guessing like a, a paladin of some sort um, and there seems to be sort of lesser you know uh, versions of both of them so there's about six uh, of them in total that are sort of coming out of the inn and they all seem just a little bit disheartened and sort of you know down like they they were you know some whatever happened inside didn't sort of meet to their liking um, but they they sort of get to the bottom of stairs as you're arriving and they all look at Torok and sort of like have this moment of stunned silence and then look at each other and then they draw weapons and we'll start there for next time wait they they saw Torok at the hotel was it or well, yeah so this, you're just the outside the the inn just at this outside point. the inn okay what did you do <laughs> he bought me the screaming dagger i paid Actually, in cash I will, <laughs> I'll add one extra bit. So they draw the weapons. They, uh -huh. uh, they are specifically looking at Torok. Um, and actually, I'll give um, anybody who wants to a quick perception check as I sort of do this last bit. Um, and they demand of Torok to give them the life stone. Oh. Talon, you definitely notice it. Jacob, uh, you notice it. Uh, Wisp. Uh, would not notice it because she was not there the first time and Mint notices it. Um, the colors uh, that they are wearing on them, they uh, match the fire soul. Oh. So this is some looks like high ranking members of the cult of the fire soul that have caught up to you. Uh, they have asked for the life stone and they are drawing weapons. Dang them. And we'll pick that up for next time. If only we had a chest. <laughs> it away. Quickly, throw Torok into the chest. What? <laughs> oh, uh, thank you very much for joining us this week. Uh, it's been a pleasure to uh, have you, um, and hopefully you have enjoyed yourselves. Um, we'll be back in a couple of weeks to see what happens with uh, this interesting encounter. All right, take care. <laughs>